Hey everyone, in this video we are going to compare the old GPT-4 to the newest GPT-4 Turbo versus Cloud3 Opus versus Gemini 1.5 Pro versus two random models from the chatbot arena using four difficult math problems that are posted on Stack Exchange. And also we will compare it in a difficult coding task using the documentation provided in OpenAI Cookbook, trying to get it to write uh, proper function calling GPT-4 calls, which actually calls itself as a function call. So this should be a fun one. Let's get started. I don't know if you know, but if you go to open, uh, platform.openai.com, now they have the compare option, where from where you can select one of their models. We're going to select GPT-4, GPT-4 Turbo. And here, right here, you can set the settings. I've set the maximum token store uh, maximum. You can enter a system message. If you enter a system message, they automatically sync unless you uncheck this box. So, but we're just going to leave that empty. And now you enter your message here and they both give you responses. And then we're going to do the same with Claude, Gemini, and then the chatbot arena. This arena is actually what is used to calculate the leaderboard that you may have seen all over the internet. So this is the first question. If every two out of three ready-made shirts need alterations in sleeves and every four out of five needed in the body, how many alterations will be required for 60 shirts? This is a word problem. Let's go ahead and paste it here and let these two start answering. We're also going to ask Claude to do the same and Gemini to do the same. And also in the chatbot arena, we're going to ask the same question. So these models, we don't know which ones are chosen, but we'll be able to see at the end. So let's take a problem. This uh, person said that the true correct answer is 88, but the uh, answer that was provided is 133. But if you read through the comments, actually 88 seems to be the correct answer. And if you look, GPT-4 says answer is 88, and the new GPT-4 says 88, so this is correct. So for each question, we'll put a green circle if they answer correctly, or a reddish one like this they answer incorrectly. Let's see what Claude has said. Uh, Claude said 56 alterations, so that is incorrect. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. Gemini said 88 alterations, so that is correct. Uh, here we go. Let's see what two random models said. So this model has said 88 alterations, and this model said 88 alterations, so they're both a tie. We're going to select tie so we can see the models. So this was the 34 billion chat, and this was Quen, one and a half, 72 billion chat. So they both were able to answer it correctly, but we're not going to have it in the uh, ranking here. Okay, so this is good. Let's move on to the next uh, next problem. This is a bit longer, so please pause it, pause the uh, video and take a look at it if you want to read it. I'm just going to copy it and bring it here. Here I can actually click on clear and paste it and let them answer this. We'll do the same with Claude right here with Gemini. And also here we need to say new round and then paste it here so we get to see what two new models are going to do. Also, this is an algebra pre calculus problem. So I'm actually going to copy it and showcase my auto streamer. I'm going to go ahead and put in this course. This actually generates courses, structured course websites about anything, anything that you're interested in. Here, let's just do algebra pre calculus. If you want to find out more, you should see the website link at the bottom right corner of your screen. So curriculum created successfully. Let's see. This looks good. We can go ahead and generate this course. And as we can see, our uh, course is being generated in the background. Variables we can listen and to constants. it. But let's see how our models did. The answer to this question is 35 and 75 respectively. So the new Turbo did it correctly and the old GPT-4 didn't. Let's look at Claude. Claude actually got it right. Gemini is still working on it. And here we got these two models. Again, this is a tie, and this one was Command R Plus and Cloud 3 Sony. Got it right. Let's see what Gemini did. So, Gemini actually gave us a method of solving the problem and didn't provide a solution. So, let's go ahead and mark them. So, old GPT 4 got it wrong, new GPT 4 got it right, Opus got it right, Gemini 1.5 Pro uh, got it right, and our course is being continued to be generated. Let's go ahead and pick a new problem. So this is in a group of children. Each child has a certain number of pencils. And we're trying to find the max maximum number of pencils. So let's go ahead and copy this. And here, again, we're going to click Clear and ask this question to all the new GPT-4. We're going to ask it to Claude and to Gemini. And to we're going to create a new round and ask it to two random models. 
And this is a sequence and series problem. You can actually go ahead and stop generating this course. This is what AutoStreamer allows us to do that. And I'm going to generate a course, three chapters about sequences and series in the meantime, if I wanted to learn more about it. So let's see what the answer to this is. So the answer we're looking for is an equaling nine and and both uh, the old GPT-4 and the new one got it wrong. Claude actually got it right with nine and Gemini is still going. And here, both of these models actually, it looks like got it wrong. So you can say both are bad. And this was E34 billion and GPT, latest GPT-4 Turbo. So we get to try it twice. Maybe we can add this here. I'm not sure. Let's see what Gemini is going to say. It's still going. Uh, it says it cannot be determined. Okay, so that's that's wrong. So this is what it looks like currently. Both GPTs got it wrong. Only Opus got this one right. In the meantime, we've generated our curriculum. We can take a look at it. And if you like it, we can go ahead and generate this course right away. And while we are doing all this, uh, our code is going to be generated. Let's take a look at our last uh, math problem. This is the math problem, two grasshoppers. So they jump at different uh, lengths. And uh, we are trying to find out how many jumps they need to perform to when so they meet. I'm going to clear this and ask it to both GPT-4, ask it to Claude, and ask it to Gemini, and then ask it to two new random models. Let's see what happens. This is our last math question. And after that, we're going to do the programming question. So I already copied the entire function calling documentation that is presented in this cookbook. And uh, what we're going to ask is actually, please to create a chat app, which does language translation. So it's going to do it with a function calling, but it's actually going to call the function that we're going to call is going to make a call to GPT-4 for the translation. So we're going to try this with all, th all, all these models and see this is a complex task and a very useful one, as you can imagine. Let's see uh, what happened with our last question. So the accepted answer is that uh, it requires 78 jumps. Let's see, the old GPT-4 said 20 jumps. That is incorrect. New GPT said 63 jumps. It got closer, but that was wrong. And the uh, Opus actually said 21 jumps. Uh, Gemini is still going. Here, a random model said 5 jumps and 78 jumps, actually. So this is the correct one, right? So the model here, actually in the LM uh, arena, actually got it right. So we can say B is better. And let's see. So this was the new GPT-4. It got it right one time. So that's interesting. So here it didn't get it right, but it got it right. So it goes to show the newer model is pretty good with math. And this other random model was Claude 3 Haiku, which got it wrong. Gemini is still going on. Let's wait for it. Also, as you can see, our uh, course on sequences is being generated. You can Explicit listen to it. Versus recursive definition. So this is really nice. Uh, Auto streamer generate courses in real time like this about any subject. It's uh, going continuing to generate. Okay, Gemini concluded it's 22 jumps, which is incorrect. So let's go ahead and mark these. So I just kind of did it like this. I guess this is half a point because it answered it, you know, in the arena rightly one time. So now let's continue with our coding question. So this is, uh, like I said, a copy of the function calling. And we are going to ask, let's read what we are going to ask. Can you please create a chat app which gets language translations using a function, but the function should call GPT-4 Turbo model for the translations. Our main chat app should use GPT-4 Turbo as well with function calling. Please solely refer to documentation when creating the app. Please return the code in a single code block. We just need the app that works from the terminal. So it doesn't, it will, so it won't try to create a web app or something like that. So let's paste this here. We're going to ask it to old and new GPT-4. We're going to ask this to Claude. Maybe let's make a new chat. I'm just going to enter it because the instructions were in there. Let's create a new chat with Gemini 2. Let's give it a fair chance so it doesn't think it's a math problem. And now we're going to ask it here with a new round, so two random models, and then we are going to test it. Okay, let's take a look at the coding results. Actually, this older GPT-4 model in the platform, OpenAI's platform compares says that the maximum token is 8,000. So this must be the really old GPT-4. Uh, in any case, we have the uh, results for the latest GPT-4 here. So this is the code it provided. It's actually going to do a function call, but it's not actually calling uh, translate text. So this actually seemingly made a mistake because it's trying to call a translate function, which it didn't define. Uh, I actually did this experiment earlier 
with uh, the chat GPT. It was able to provide it, but uh, this time it failed. Let's see what Claude did. So as you can see, this won't work because, because it's, it's trying to call a translate function, which we don't have here, and it's not calling the function. Now, Opus actually did better here. We have a chat with GPT, and it's, uh, and it's actually has a translate text function, and it's going to try to call it, and it has a tool definition, and we have a loop, which actually gets the function arguments and calls the translate text. Let's actually put a breakpoint here, run it in debug mode. See, this actually is calling the function. Let's ask, how do I say hello in French? And yeah, I thought this was going to happen because uh, it used the function call. But as we know, the latest API actually requires tool, uh, such as here. So it actually made a mistake. But I actually tried this before, and it worked. So <laughs> this is twice on the video that it didn't. Uh, let's go ahead and see what... Uh, Gemini did. Okay, Gemini, in first look, so it created a translate text, which makes a call to GPT with the target language, and it defined that tool. It's just, it said the name is translate, except it should be, I believe, translate text. Maybe we can help it a little bit. And it's going to, it actually accurately chose the parameters as tools and tool choice. And here it's going to try to make a function call. Let's run this and see if this will work. We did help it with the function the name, but actually the problem with the other one was more fundamental. So this should hopefully work. We'll ask the same thing. We're going to ask the same thing. Incorrect API. Okay, I have to remove this line because I auto detect from my environment variables. Let's try again. Okay, now the moment of truth. Yep, it is calling the function. So it is, yeah, it's actually we had to fix this part right here. Function translate text. Let's try it again. So obviously it didn't work out of the box, but it got really close. I just want to give it a chance. Uh, tool, okay. It actually is calling. It actually called GPT for translation. Bonjour, say calling the translate text. So this actually worked and we got the translation printed. Bonjour. In the chatbot arena, we, this one actually failed, which was called Llama 70 billion, but here we have some code which we can copy and take a look. This is from the old GPT-4, GPT-4-0313. Let's see how that did. Okay, if we look, it did do the right parameters, tools and tool choice it created. So this should actually work. Did it get the name of the function right? Translate text? No, it didn't. Let's help it a little bit right here, by, just as we did with Gemini. And if the function name, you have to say here, translate text, and put a break mark here. See if it will accurately call the function, which will make another call to GPT. We are going to ask the same thing again. And oh, API key, I have to remove this real quick and run it again. By the way, our whole course and sequence is has a sequence and series is created. Fibonacci sequence. So this is cool. I'll talk more about AutoStreamer here in a moment. Let's actually see if this is going to work. What can I, how can I say? Yeah, so unrecognized arguments. Completions, because it didn't use chat completions. So this, this failed. So effectively, all, three, all four of them have failed on this one. But actually, when I tried it before the video, they actually worked, but they, they got close, I guess. So when we look at this, so with this little test, when we tally up the results, old GPT-4 got only one right, new GPT-4 got two and a half right, Opus got two, and Gemini got one right. So the new GPT-4 actually ended up doing the best in this case. If you enjoy my videos, you can find all 280 videos I've created at my website, echohive.lab. These are directly linked to the YouTube videos. You can find their descriptions. And if you're a patron, you can actually download the codes very easily. So this gives you the benefit of this is that you get to experiment quickly. I do this all day long so that you can actually learn and experiment with different ideas much more quicker. And becoming a patron gives you access to the code over 200 projects. So that is the, you know, so you can unlock some new ideas and experiment with them quickly. As you can see, AutoStreamer generated this course and it, it is actually still streaming, but I can stop it and I can go to view and launch courses. I can close this website. So now this course was fully generated. I can actually relaunch that course at any time I like. Like I said, it doesn't have to be about math. You can zoom in if you like to make the text bigger. Partial sums. So it comes with the audio as well. It creates courses in a structured format, which are ready to deploy. If you'd like to find out more about AutoStreamer, you can go to autostreamer.live 
And you can actually download a free demo. If you click on it, it'll take you to uh, Google Drive and you can actually download it by clicking this button. When you download it, you'll get AutoStreamer demo.exe, which you can run. It's currently only available for Windows. So the demo actually works uh, just like the full version, but it's some, some, of the, some of its features are limited. The cool part of AutoStreamer is that actually this course, if I click on open folder, is entirely deployable online. All I have to do is actually just go to my GitHub repo, create a new repository. Going to create a private uh, repo called Sequence and Series, and then all I have to do is actually just upload these files by clicking uh, Upload Existing Files. And once I upload this, I can easily deploy it online. Uh, let's just do that real quick. Once I upload it, I'm going to click on Commit Changes. All the files that AutoStreamer generated are uploaded. I'm going to commit the changes. So this is going to create a new repository, after which I can go to my Railway account or wherever you like to host your websites in. And since our repository has been created and my uh, repo has been uh, linked, I can just say deploy from GitHub repo, repo uh, select sequence and series and deploy now, and this should make it online. While this is building, I'm just going to come to the settings tab and I'm going to generate a domain. Railway automatically generates a domain for this. I'll just wait until it's built and then I'll generate a domain. You can also, uh, if you have a custom domain, you can actually hook your custom domain up as well. Uh, once you have the, if you do download the full version of the auto streamer, then you can actually change this header and footer message along with the link that is provided. When you click on download full app, it'll take you to my Patreon shop. It's currently available for $200. Okay, I'm just going to select generate domain. And just like that, I have deployed it online in sequence and series. This is now fully online. I'll actually put the link in the description. If you want to uh, check this course out. Definition and notation of sequence. Yeah, you can generate general courses with code or without Absolute code. Absolute versus condition. And uh, so this is pretty cool. Uh, let me know if you have any questions at our Discord. I hope you enjoyed this video, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.